Hey Blue Squadron fans, today we are removing plastic from the interior of the Star Destroyer's hull. I want to give myself plenty of space to hide all of the electronics and wiring inside of the Star Destroyer. Before I start cutting, I'm going to use a sharpie to mark out which sections of plastic I can remove. I need to know which areas are safe for my Dremel to go through so that I don't damage any of the exterior details. Most of my work is going to be done using a Dremel with a disc grinding blade. Because it's a circular shaped tool, I need to keep on flipping the model over so that I can cut from both the exterior and the interior. This allows me to safely work my way in to make sure that I don't accidentally damage any of those exterior details. It's also important to let the plastic and the blade rest in between cuts. If you work too quickly, the grinding tool will end up melting the plastic rather than cutting it. After each of the rough cuts, I'm going to want to smooth out the inside. It's also important to make sure that the spinning collet on the Dremel itself doesn't touch the plastic. That's an easy way to accidentally damage some of those exterior details. Because the plastic is pretty soft, it's also possible to use the flat side of the grinding disc. When possible, I also like to work from the inside of the model. Compared to X-Wing models, the Super Star Destroyer is pretty three-dimensional. This allows me to cut on multiple axes as well as from different angles. You'll notice here that I'm using the blade at a 45 degree angle to remove this last bit of plastic. I'm being pretty aggressive with plastic removal for the center section because I want to house all of my electronics there. I don't want to start wiring and find out that I don't have enough space later. Now I'm going to drill through the engine nozzles. It turns out that each of the engine nozzles is a slightly different size, so I'm going to use different drill bits. You may find that the collet that comes with the Dremel doesn't fit every single drill bit. I ended up buying a pack of extra collets that are narrow enough to fit the small drill bits that I use. It's best to start with small holes and then use the edge of the drill bit to enlarge the holes if necessary. Next, I did a dry fitting of those engine housings back onto the hull. This was to see exactly how much clearance I had to work with when drilling channels for the wires. I like to place the engine LEDs inside of the nozzles themselves and then run the wiring through the hull if possible. The hull side housing for the double engine nozzles might be a little bit too narrow for that. I may have to solder some surface mount LEDs to magnet wires and mount those directly to the hull and let them shine through the nozzles. When drilling these particular holes, I want to be very conservative to make sure that I don't accidentally damage the exterior. With the magic of video editing, I'm going to fast forward to the next 5 or 6 minutes of doing the same thing 4 times in a row. The large triple engine housings have a lot more clearance to work with. However, I noticed something a little strange. The outermost engine nozzle doesn't actually line up with the hull housings. This means there's no space to actually run wiring directly from the engine nozzle through that area. In fact, I'm going to have to thread the wires through the middle engine nozzle's wiring channel. Next, I'm going to do a dry fitting with the LEDs. My intention is to glue the LED lenses into the engines, run the wiring through the hull, connect everything through the circuit board, and after I've screwed the model back together, just push the engine housings down onto the hull. I thought I'd be super lazy and buy some LEDs that are already pre-wired with a resistor soldered into place. It turns out that I was mistaken about a great many things. The pre-soldered resistor is so thick that it prevents the LED and the engine housing from fitting all together. I tried clearing out some additional space in the engine housing itself, hopefully leaving enough room for the exterior most LED to have its wires run through the center most LED's channels. It still didn't work, but luckily I bought these pre-wired LEDs using Amazon Prime, which means I get free returns. Dry fitting some naked, unwired LEDs into the engine nozzles shows me that I can actually fit the whole thing together like I intended, as long as I get the resistor closer to the circuit board inside of the hull rather than close to the engine nozzle. I'm still going to have to run the wires for the LED in the outermost engine nozzle in through the middle engine nozzle, so I went ahead and made that modification to the second engine housing on the other side. I aggressively cleared away as much plastic as possible without damaging the exterior details, and then after much struggling, I managed to get the engines to fit with the LEDs in through the hull. You can see in this shot exactly how much plastic I ended up removing from the hull to get those triple engine nozzles to fit with the LED legs. The center main engine block is actually part of a removable piece of plastic, so that was pretty easy to do. There's plenty of space and clearance there, and this is where most of the electronics will end up being housed, including the LED driver, the power module, and the controller. That's it for plastic removal, and in the next video, I'm going to assemble a prototype of the circuit. Thanks for watching!